This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, and sent by God to your house to the Clear unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, very important, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to Scripture. He was buried, he rose again the third day, according to Scripture. Thank God. Spare the Lord, said, bought me. He said, anoint me. Preach the gospel to the poor. Send me to him. The broken heart. <coughs> Preach the livers to the captives, recover sight to the blind, set at liberty, them that are bruised. Word is not thee. You in your heart, in your mouth, this is a word of faith. So I preach, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. But with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made under salvation. Amen. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's the power of God under salvation. Everyone that believes it, to the Jew first, also to the Greek, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just to live by his faith. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, or other devices. Thank God. And to my right, I have co-host Terry Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And to my left, I have co-host Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Amen. On the wire in Strasburg, Colorado, we have Kathy Courier. On the wire. Good morning. Good morning. Thank God. And from Middle Tennessee, Mount Juliet, we have Cindy Barber. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Now, we have the My Girls on recording, right? Right. Let them lift us up.
Amen. We have two books available. One, what is the gospel? So two, Jesus did the Father's will. Amen. And they're available uh, for to be downloaded in three locations. And as of today, we have of the two books have been downloaded 948 times. Amen. That's the total of two, right? Right. Total of two books in three different areas. Three areas. And in two different languages. Right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Hebrew and English, right? Right. Amen. Thank God. So, you know, God has blessed water of God, amen, directed us in ways that please him. Amen. Amen. The good amen. <clears throat> We've been blessed enough to follow what he tells us. Amen. amen. You know, he said something and it's by the Spirit that I had obeyed. His commandments. That blessed me. Do you know that? Amen. To have God say that. Amen. Have the Lord say that. Amen. And followed all of his commandments. And said what he told me to. And done what he told me to do. Amen. That God. Amen. That was one thing I wanted to do when I started with the Lord in 19, uh, well, 69. Amen. Once I got started, I wanted to do what he said. I didn't want to do what I wanted to do. I've done that long enough. And now I said to him, if this is you that's been bugging me all these years, I know it's kind of strange language to God, but he understood what I was saying because it bothered me. I was hearing things from the Lord all the time about preaching the gospel. Amen. So when I said, if you are the one that's been bugging me, sell my uh, shares, and that corporation, I'll do what you say. My goodness. The next day, I stopped at a Dairy Queen in Anna, Texas, to get a Coke on my way to the Oklahoma line to see a horse, treat a horse, and there stood two partners. And we agreed to sell it right there. Yeah. At one o'clock. What? You didn't ask them. They asked you. What? You didn't ask them if you could sell it to them. They asked you. They asked me if I'd sell it. Right. And I said, as reluctant as I could, I didn't want to be too anxious. I didn't want to appear too anxious. But inside of me, I was thinking, are you kidding? <laughs> Talk about a divine meeting. Oh, that was a divine meeting set up by God. Did you know those two gentlemen are in heaven? Amen. They were friends of mine. One a banker and one vice president of a construction company. Amen. Well, what are we going to do, friends? 900 and 48 downloads. Uh, English, Hebrew combined in three different you use areas. Amen. Right? Right. I'll use your turn. Amen. Thank God. What are we going to do? What would we want to... Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Would we want to comment about what's going on in Zimbabwe? Uh, we got pictures yesterday yeah. on Facebook. Anybody can see them there. 
They have printed out the doctrine, what we teach and do. They've printed it out. Uh, Steady and Susan have printed it out for themselves and for their leaders, and then they're continuing on to print it out for the people, and they're uh, beginning to teach that doctrine all around uh, all of their areas there where they teach their churches, their gatherings Mm -hmm. there. So they're beginning to really get this foundation laid in their own hearts and then in the hearts of the people they're teaching. And Amen. Doyle exhorted steady. He said, you'll have to teach this over and over and over and over in order for it to get into people's hearts, including yourself. <laughs> Could you pretty much put this together. Would you tell the people what you know about that doctrine? Well, what I really did was I just took the teaching that you, the I took um, the gospel and its benefits. I took the um, the foundation and I took the blood of Jesus tapes, which you taught us the first year of Water of Life Christian Training School. You had all your scriptures there, and of course Terry and I have been through the school more than once, so I had a lot of memory. And all I did was I laid it out kind of like you did that first year of Christian training school. Now, we added a little bit more. In the very beginning, we added about Amen. where the doctrine came from, that it was a doctrine, and, and we added about of the... Father. Right, that it was <clears throat> of the Father, and we added the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the, that. But most of it, and the neat thing about that doctrine, it is not, there's no opinion in it. It is all. It is ninety percent scripture, and it's scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. For in it, it's laid out in a outline form so that you can teach it, and it's laid out pretty straight. And it, it is all in the beginning. The outline is laid out, and then it goes by point by point, and then all the scriptures that follow. And that's the wonderful thing about it. All the scriptures are are laid out to the single point, so there's no room for discussion, no room for opinion. This is just the way the word is written. It's just put all in one place. Where I remember at Water Life Christian Training School, I mean, we were flipping pages pretty quick. And Dole didn't spend a lot of time when he taught, talking about extraneous. Is that how you pronounce it? That's word. Yeah, extra. Per, yeah, that's a good extra. Word. <laughs> I'm only a third grade teacher, folks. That's a dollar word. But anyway, he, he didn't do a lot of that. It was very straightforward. And that's how this is set up. So, and. It says in the very beginning, this doctrine is not our doctrine. It is the doctrine of the Lord that Jesus taught. Listen, John 7 got me. There are three verses there. It says, Jesus said, this doctrine is not his. That's right. But the doctrine he taught was the fathers. Amen. And if any man did the will of God, he would know that this doctrine is... We need to read that. It is John 7, verse 16. And Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. A friend of mine, graduate of Rama Bible Training School, Institute, whatever it is, said to me one day, though where in the world did you find this? <laughs> I said, what's right there in the Bible? He said, I never heard these scriptures. That didn't teach us that. I said, well, 
God had me teach you. Amen. That, that was amazing. Doctor's not the Lord. It's the Father's, right? Right. And that's one of the very first scriptures but, at the, the, the top the, of the page. Doesn't that say you have to do the Father's will? Right. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's where I got it. It's simple. Paula was there. But I want to speak to you, all of you. I was a, a veterinarian. Obey God. Started water by church. And the direction of the Lord is what? Uh, 1980? Right? 1981, right? Was that when you came in here? Well, okay. well, that's when I started. Right. But 1980 is when God told me to come to Plano, right. speak to people in Plano, right? Right. Right. And <clears throat> ask him what I say. He said, read where Paul and Barnabas were at Antioch, you'll understand. Now, that was an amazing thing. But every step, that I took was guided by the Lord uh, himself or Jehovah himself. Amen. Amazed me how they directed my path. This, thing, this ministry is certainly not of me. It's of God and no one else. And one of the most amazing things is no man, he said, the Lord said, no man could what? Resist what I was doing. Amen. Amen. No man. But those kind of promises, you get rid of your marriage, you might be on the wrong track. You know, what is such a blessing in that doctrine is in it, if you will turn with me to Hebrews 6, 1. In it is the foundation teachings. Right. And it's from Hebrews uh, chapter 6, verse 1. I want us to just look at this because this is very important for those that are reading it. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. That's what's in there, the principles. It says, let us go on into perfection. Stop. Yes. You can't go on into perfection until you got the foundation in you. It says it right here. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, of laying on of hands, of the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. Now go back and look at that phrase. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, not laying again. So they had already, Hebrews had already had it laid in them. You cannot go on into perfection until this is laid in you. So there, it's all in there, uh, step by step. The foundation of repentance of dead works is in there. Faith toward God is in there. All in order and all the scriptures needed to study, to believe, to walk in. And Jeffy. You cannot go on to perfection unless God will. Amen. Amen. Does it say that? I think it says that. In Hebrews 6. Right there, you keep reading. Okay, right. It says, verse 3, and this will we do if God permit. Thank you. Permit. Permit. So you say you are laying the foundation. Oh, maybe you are, maybe you're not. If God told you to, you've got the foundation in you, then God will tell you to do it. And if he doesn't permit you to go on, I'm sorry, you're not going. And we can go right back to what we've been talking about here. Uh, Terry has said it, I've said it, Dole obviously has taught it, that you cannot teach the foundation in the letter. You have got to teach it by the Spirit. It's got to be ministered to you by the Spirit or it becomes 
a dead work also. It's amazing. You're a minister of death to the hearer. Right. You're a minister of death to the ones you're teaching. Now, I'm going to go back. I was in Missouri, seeing my parents on Christmas. And I, Pat and I left. Patty's in heaven. Pat and I left and was going down I-44. When well, we got to the Oklahoma line, the Lord told me to start Water Blind Christian Training School. Amen. I said, what? I told Patty what God said. She said, I don't remember, but it was not. It wasn't something that would encourage me. And I said, well, God said it. And I've got some things prepared, but not much, to start a, a Bible school, a Christian training school. And, and, you know, I said, I don't even know if this is in the Bible. I'm not sure. You know what the Lord said What about what Paul did? Well, two whole years in the what the school taught in the school of one Terenius. That's right, that's right. Terenius, uh -huh. Lord said daily. there. Huh? Yeah, daily, I think, taught in daily. one school. Right? Lord said there it is. It's in the Bible. So he gave me he gave me the, the name of it. Water Bible Christian Training School. Not in call it a Bible school. Amen. No. But so I drove 315 miles <coughs> southwest to get to McKinney. And I told him here, it's going to start Water Black Christian Training School. And a person who was an elder said, who's going to come? <laughs> I said, I don't know. But if nobody comes, I'm going to teach it anyway. You know what? 54 people showed up, and he was one of them. Amen. And more came each year after that. Uh, you know, uh, other people took went through the school. For all the years that you had it, there were new people every year that went through the training school. If I remember correctly, I think the second year you only had 12 and you stood up to talk to be begin and you got really sick. I got sick. That was the second semester. That's, oh, it was the second semester. Oh, okay. yeah. Book of Romans. <laughs> <laughs> I got so sick. <laughs> they brought a Big garbage <laughs> can to me. My goodness, I was sick. Bumperton, that's rare for me. Right. Very rare. And when I got through, I went to the bedroom, cleaned myself up, and as I stood there, I said, You better. Go back out there and continue teaching this or you will never get it done. And I went back and started doing the same thing and I made it through the hour. Amen. Oh, but amazing what God did with me. He put together that Water Black Christian Training School, every time we needed something different, new, a new step, he'd tell me what it was, and I'd put it together by the Spirit of God and teach it. Amen. You know, in Matthew 28, Jesus told them uh, to go, he told the disciples after he's raised from the dead, he said, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always in the world. But there he says, teach them. In the March in the Bible, it says, make disciples. Right. Training. It's training them how to walk in all the things that Jesus commanded his own disciples. You remember the day I said, we're going to baptize for the dead? Amen. Yes. That first for Corinthians 15? Yes. So, I could hardly stand up. I was so, you know, this has been 11 years, and I've been attacked because of the, 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 the people that persecuted me. Amen. And I remember David Gasbright and someone helped me baptize them, I think. David Casbright baptized you, and then you baptized everyone else. If that I, that no, was it. That you was start, it. you baptized those of us. That was it. Right and you now. baptized in Oklahoma, and then we started, I think David was baptizing after that. I'm, uh, Do I have that right, David? <laughs> Close what enough. did he say? Close enough. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Yeah. That's good. We better get out of here and do some singing, don't you think? I want to say one thing before we do. Sure, go on. Today is December 19th, and I just want to share that 242 years ago, this was the day that Washington, General Washington, went into Valley Forge. Valley Forge was uh, outside of Philadelphia, about a marching distance, a day's marching distance away. The, his whole army, 12,000 men, that's all. 12,000 men went into Valley Forge. The English had already taken Philadelphia. They had Philadelphia. Washington, they went in there and they knew that Thank God, well, because of the way that our weapons and all that worked, you didn't fight during the wintertime. Your, your muskets and stuff wouldn't work if they were wet. So they were in Valley Forge. That was the worst time in the American Revolution. I think, Terry, you have ancestors who were in the Revolutionary War. I have ancestors that were at Valley Forge. 12,000 men went in. 2,000 died there that winter out of disease and cold. It was the worst time. Congress, the, there was a move to get rid of Washington, to, to, to remove him because things weren't going well. The, they had women there that were sewing and trying to keep the guys warm. There were amputations because people were, had frostbite. They were living in tents, and they were living in the harsh Pennsylvania winter. Any of you that know what Pennsylvania winter is like, it's cold, very cold, bitter cold. Anyway... During that time, the six months that they were there, was the first time that the American soldier saw basic training. The first time in American history. And that is what we call the birthplace of the American army. What went in was a group of men that knew absolutely nothing about combat. They only could take orders. They had men there my ancestor being one of them, that taught them, that, that put them into being a real soldier. And that's when America started turning around. It was a bad time. But God was with America. 1777, it was dark here in the colonies. But we came through. We came through it. We not only came through it with a nation, but we came through it with a bill of rights that the very first bill of right is that you can, um, you can practice your religion with your conscience and the government cannot stop you. That's what came out of those and also came out of Constitution. Our America right now is in turmoil. But it was birthed, it was birthed by God. And he is not going to let it go. He will not let America go. 
Amen. I want to interject something. Yes. Uh, that doesn't pertain to what we're speaking of right now. But more than one person came to Water of Life Christian Training School year after year after year after year. Is that right? Yes. yes. Terry and I yes. being one of them. There were <laughs> Two quite them. a few that did. That's right. A lot of them. And guess what? That's what I know you have to do. You have to get it in you and you have to read it, speak, teach it time after time after time after time and you'll get a revelation and then you can believe God for money when you don't even know anybody's got money. And also, I want to remind, Terry might remember this, there was a prophecy out of those days that said that God was going to pour out his spirit through Water of Life Christian Training School. He said it. Yes. He said it. Look, we better sing, hadn't we? Amen. But I'm, I'm enjoying this. Amen. Ready. All come to the place To the one who raised from the dead All come and see The risen King For he is our God And greatly to be praised Oh, 
and it was dark in my heart. You brought to light to me a child of darkness became a child of light and when my soul was so Bye.
but God has given us today his overcoming power greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world on that day of Pentecost a mighty rushing wind blew into the upper room to baptize all of them with a power greater than anyone had known and I'm so glad we got it too I wanna tell the whole wide world now tell them with me greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world god is greater than the wisest man greater than the power of sin greater than the gates of hell greater than anyone can tell greater than the richest king greater than a I'm about to share something that we need to transcribe and keep. Okay. I don't know if you've heard it. I don't know if anybody has. June? Oh, wait. I came out. At the barber shop, Jack Densmore, my barber for 30 years. I was driving a towel and I had Jerry Mice and it's finished. I'm a radio. I started the car. The radio came on. And the words. Victory is here. Was anointed by God. I want to get that transcribed that we will consider what followed with this ministry that June away. Oh, I know it's important. I just heard it just <laughs> few minutes back victory is here I do the spirit of God note this it's important I think I know some but I'll <laughs> tell you what I know well, I know, I'm sure. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. 
Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, amen. Coming up, Kathy D will be addressing the ladies at the ladies' meeting at 10 minutes past 12. Amen. I now want to thank every person that passed and prays for me each Thursday from my eyesight and oppression to go. I said, I think it's 58, this is a past. that are chosen to loose the bands of wickedness and heavy burdens destroy every yoke and let the oppressed go free. Last night, but this morning happened to be this day <laughs> about three maybe am I close yeah it's about 340 I think three you, asked, what? you asked me what time it was it was 340 I woke you up yep <laughs> I was in a position that I couldn't understand I thought, why am I so fearful? <laughs> it was really ugly. And I thought, I've got the white candy up. Now I told her, I think I've been a lot of fear. I don't understand it. I, at that time, I was praying that God she may have gone back to sleep. I wasn't really asleep, but I, it was very heavy. I didn't talk much. You were slumbering. Yeah. But let me tell you what happened. I felt, this is not fear. This is oppression. Let the press go free. No. I thought, I think this is deep oppression. I think that's what it was. But I've been just wanting to cry when I think about it. 
I woke up just before five. What? Said I woke up just before five and you stirred. So I asked you if you were doing all right, and you had overcome it. Right. By then, in fact, you were asleep. It was all gone. Right. But it was had to be. It was oppression, and I think it was big. Depression. Amen. You follow me? Yeah. I can hardly talk about this. This has been 11 years. Thank God. Victory is here. That's it. They're not Carry by. Amen. Victory's still here. Oh, yeah. I think I'm, I'm going to quit. Get out, out of here. Pray. Did I have anything else I need to say? I don't remember. We do have communion on Sunday. Oh, communion. Sunday. Right. Fourth Sunday of every month. Amen. Paul Peters will be teaching it. God bless you. See you tonight. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call us at area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson at Post Office Box 941925, Plano, Texas 75094. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 941925, Plano, Texas 75094. This program is paid for by Water of Life.